far, Vernon, do you view the transition to a lower carbon economy as an important area of investment for New Zealand? I see it as, um, as an essential area of investment. Um, both in terms of, um, not only in terms of our, our obligation as a global citizen to, to help in mitigating mm -hmm. uh, climate change and the harmful effects of, but also in terms of, uh, of New Zealand's um, actual competitive advantage yeah. and, and, and economic future, it makes um, a lot of sense for us to actually position ourselves in a country mm -hmm. where about 74% of our um, energy mm -hmm. is from renewable resources and we have uh, considerable uh, expertise in uh, renewable industries and power generation industries um, and, and uh, generated by power companies that are still almost entirely in state hands as well. So we're, we're very well placed with some intelligent government procurement and research and development and, um, and, and perhaps a, a tax regime and incentivization regime around that. We're very well placed to capitalize on what um, is going to be uh, the demand that will be coming from the rest of the world as well to yeah. provide these technologies. So how do you think our government should promote the research, development and deployment of new green technologies and sustainable practices to Kiwi businesses? Okay, well the Green Party has, um, has very specific policies mm -hmm. around this um, and it, is, um, it, it forms a central plank of our um, jobs and, um, and green growth policy or green economics policy which is that um, there, first of all, we would look at government procurement contracts. So what do we mean by government procurement? Mm. Government procurement basically being that um, contracts for, um, for any sort of uh, construction or, or services or um, products that can be made in New Zealand mm. that we will favour um, New wonderful. Zealand businesses yeah. in doing this. Now wouldn't that be a great yeah. thing? You know, yeah. There's a great example of um, not the most high tech of, um, of examples but a, um, a, a technological example was with the, um, the construction of the new um, trains mm -hmm. um, that uh, are required around the country. For, um, uh, so for instance, where you know expanding the Northland Railway Network. Yeah. Um, now there was a company in Dunedin that was very, very well equipped to do so, um, but instead the um, contract was awarded to a, um, a Spanish company, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it seems to be made off offshore. So um, there are very clear examples like that. So sometimes, sometimes, you know, there are things that are made more efficiently and better overseas, but often mm -hmm. we can really incentivize New Zealand businesses yeah. by actually awarding those contracts um, you know, and favoring New Zealand businesses. Mm -hmm. Another thing to do, in New Zealand, we have one of the very lowest research and development spends in the OECD countries. Um, we are really spending um, a, a fractional amount of our GDP um, on um, actually investing money into research development, which is money that um, you know, is, is not a cost, but an investment. Any money that's put into research and development mm -hmm. will make us far, far more than, um, yeah. than we've actually yeah. spent on incentivizing that research and development. So not only is that a positive thing for, um, you know, for in, in the shorter term, the development of industries, but it's also um, something that would go a long way towards redressing this issue that we have in New Zealand of a lot of our brightest young minds, and mm -hmm. particularly yeah. our brightest scientifically trained young minds, going overseas because there's just not enough for them to do here. Yeah. Yeah. And there's not enough money for them to be funded in the sort of positions they should have and the kind of research they should be doing. Mm. Okay, so furthermore, what role do you think green jobs have in reducing New Zealand's unemployment problems and how it can contribute to a safer future? Well, certainly um, there are, when we talk about green jobs, I mean, there are, um, that, that can cover a whole spectrum mm -hmm. from, from high technology manufacturing to um, to uh, research and development um, in an area, so, so using those, those you know, highly trained and, and educated people. But also, another, uh, another idea that the Green Party has is the idea of having conservation corps, that is, um, actual groups of people who go around and, um, and physically go and clean up our waterways mm -hmm. and, and assist with, um, with fencing off waterways, mm -hmm. with, with native plantings, and with doing that on the ground, hands-on stuff. Um, that, that really needs to be done. Um, so you know, we, have the, we have lots of volunteers doing that. We have lots already, of volunteer organizations. Yeah. I've done some great work mm. out, out, in, um, out in my electorate. There are some people doing some amazing stuff in mm. North Coast, in yeah. Auckland, yeah. Where, I'm, um, where I'm standing as a candidate. There are a couple of um, outstanding groups. Um, there's the LaRoy's Bush Society, the Carpatagi Project. There are some fantastic groups out there who I've gone and helped out with you know, mm. weeding and planting days and that sort of mm. thing. 
but um, but this is stuff that is um, that these are really uh, you know essential mm. um, services. These are the responsibility, um, you know, not just of the community but but of the state as well. Um, and uh, and they're being left to volunteers, you know, yeah. and it's it's too important for that. But not only that, but yeah, this is this is great work. But you know, not everybody um, is highly skilled. Not everybody is you know highly scientifically trained. You know, there are plenty of people. Um, you know who can do who can do fantastic work. Um, you know, helping mm -hmm. out at that level as well. And there's all sorts of um, places in between. If we focus on on conservation, yeah. um, certainly not doing what's happening under the government, current government, which is cutting funding to the Department of Conservation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next question. In your opinion, is the emissions trading scheme an equitable system which delivers the right economic signals and incentives? incentives to emitters? My short answer to that would be no. Um, not at all. Um, the, the issue with, um, with an ETS, um, now trading mechanisms in general, uh, the, the issue is, is that first of all, do we have the right price on carbon? Mm -hmm. now that's, that's a big part of the question, is, is that the price of carbon is, is almost definitely too cheap. Um, but also the way that the scheme is implemented. Um, and, and in New Zealand, specific to our ETS, which has been um, weakened further from, um, from a fairly compromised position that it was in to start with, uh, what we have now is one where the largest polluting industries are exempted. Uh, you know, so in agriculture, um, with, and that's primarily dairy, mm -hmm. uh, my understanding is that, is that our meat production, for instance, is actually there's been a, some, some reduction mm -hmm. in greenhouse gas emissions, but in dairy, the emissions from dairy have been have been absolutely going through the roof, mm -hmm. and um, and look to continue um, spiraling upwards. Uh, so they are exempted, yes. um, and and uh, what's more is that the industry, so that the heavy polluting industries um, and and agriculture um, are generally left out. You know the argument being that they are uh, too important, that they're the engine rooms of mm -hmm. the economy, and that it makes us uncompetitive if we actually um, look at uh, introducing charges there. Well, when you Can I just ask a quick question? Mm. Um, are they left out completely, or I read somewhere that they might be included into the scheme at the next phase or something? That's like right. That. So that right? currently, yeah. currently yeah. they're left out, mm. but but over time, yes. the idea is that they will be, you know, what they call grandfathered yeah, in, yeah. which is where they're given a certain amount of time to comply, mm -hmm. and where they are also um, where they're also given a um, quite a substantial. Um, allocation of credits, and there's another issue, mm -hmm. is with over allocation, mm -hmm. is that um, if, if too many credits are actually given out. But the problem with the system of trading is that it, um, it, it allows, you know, there are certain people who are given more credits than they need, um, you know, there's over allocation, mm -hmm. um, if, if the price isn't quite right, what it allows for is for, for windfall profits um, to be gained, where people can actually profit from their own pollution through yeah. clever trading mm -hmm. um, of the schemes. So in my view, um, a, a very good approach is a, is a carbon tax. Yeah. It gets straight to the heart of the problem. It deals directly with the pollution at source mm -hmm. from the emitter. Yes. Um, and that was something that uh, Jeanette Fitzsimons, a former co-leader of the Greens Party, um, advanced in 2006 in the Climate Change Amendment Bill. Um, but that bill was, um, was defeated in the House. And, and no small part of that was that um, a, a very, very large aluminium smelter um, and by Comalco, which uses um, a substantial percentage of New Zealand's electricity. It has its own power station, put it that way, it has its own power generation plant, um, uh, said that they would just move their operations offshore mm -hmm. if the carbon tax were to come through. But the point to make about, you know, when we've had some very, very emotive rhetoric from, um, uh, from our Prime Minister about the idea of um, bringing agriculture um, under, and particularly daring agriculture, mm -hmm. Uh, under the uh, emission trading scheme. Um, and and the, the phrase driving a dagger through the heart of growth was actually used. Very, very emotive language, mm -hmm. um, but with no numbers to follow it up. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is that when looked at as an actual um, proportion of, um, uh, of, of, the, um, of the yield, as in um, we're getting record high payouts for dairy at the moment, um, so a um, dairy producer is being paid um, by way of Fonterra $8 per kilo of milk solids. That's eight dollars per kilo. Now if they were to pay their credit, it would be uh,